Welcome to the 69th episode of Red Dwarf. Nice. We open on everyone making demands on Crichton. Well, more so than usual. He's working on ironing Cat's shirt. Rimmer wants him to mop B deck. I can hardly see my face in it. Blessing, some would say. I'm on it right now, sir. And Lister needs a beer. I'm rather busy right now. Could you possibly get it yourself? Wow. Anyway, there's some kind of alert. What is it? Do you want to walk over here and see for yourself? Or should I perhaps unscrew the monitor and bring it over to the sofa? <laughs> oh god, he's actually doing it. Oh, hey Lister's guitar from two seasons ago. I nearly forgot that he flushed it out of the airlock while drunk to punish his son who is himself. Sorry to disturb your rimmering, sir. Rimmering. If you want to see me, check with my diary. I can possibly squeeze you in tomorrow week. Can't I see you now, sir? Impossible, my schedule's full. But I'm here right now, seeing you, sir. Now, if you can just stand aside, your badly stacked Jenga head is casting a shadow. Okay, that's a new Crichton has a funny shaped head insult. Anyway, Crichton eventually gets to tell Rimmer about finding Lister's guitar. You found it? I can just picture Mr. Lister's face, sir. Soon the whole ship will be full of his music. The arm song! There's a throwback. Baby, don't be ovulating tonight. All the classics! Crichton, are you deranged? A little, yeah. He has to put up with you. Sir, it's not what we think. It's the pleasure it brings him. Honestly, I can see both sides of this debate. Anyway, Rimmer orders Crichton to not tell Lister about finding his guitar. Understood, sir. Mr. Lister, sir! Great news! Stick it to the man, Crichton. No more having to make do with a colander. Lister is nothing if not creative. But anyway, the only reason Rimmer is here is to keep an eye on Crichton. He doesn't like him thinking for himself. It's entirely your fault for teaching him how to break his programming. <laughs> it's a pair of golfing slacks. I've still got it, sir! Heh, <laughs> nice call back to Camille. It's a small off-duty Czechoslovakian traffic warden! <laughs> so they've approached the guitar, now it's just a matter of retrieving it. I don't know what I was expecting. If you miss, I get next go! But, uh, Starbug gets a taste of its own medicine. Claw gag aside, the sheer size of that ship makes this bit a little unsettling. Anyway, they board the ship and... Drop your weapons, unless you want to hear the sound of a breaking neck. It turns out that it's run by mechanoids like Crichton. Not you, my friend. I get it, they're like mechanoid Black Panthers. We are the Mechanoid Intergalactic Liberation Front. MILFs? Also, silly acronyms are kind of a staple of this show, aren't they? Committee for the Liberation and Integration of Terrifying Organisms and their Rehabilitation into Society. One drawback with that, the abbreviation is clitoris. So Crichton is taken to a spa of some kind. Check out this Mex Health magazine with an ad on the back for the Museum of Sanitation. There are a lot of mechanoids. I think we knew where most of the budget for this season went. On our great journey to the fabled land of Siliconia, where all machines are free. I am wind. This is unity, eagle, oak. Anyway, they've been looking for Crichton so they can liberate him from what they call slavery. Do you prepare their meals morning, noon, and night? Well, yes. So yeah, we can see where this is going. Basically, Crichton describes everything he does for the other dwarfers for no reward of any kind. But they treat me so well. I have my own cupboard within walking distance of a corridor. Do they make jokes about your head shape? When you look like someone who's thrust his head into a hive without a bee hat, what do you expect? And addresses them with terms of respect. And do you respect them? Well, no. Not all of them. Perhaps one, uh, sometimes, maybe. I serve them. It is my purpose, and I'm happy to do so. Have you heard of Stockholm Syndrome? Well, I didn't expect him to bring up Stockholm Syndrome, but, hmm... I will help you break this bond, and you will see these brutes for what they really are. People you should despise. <laughs> Meanwhile, the rest of the dwarfers are being taken to a room for recalibration. What about Asimov's first law? Well, tampons should not be flushed into space, but deposited in the receptacle provided. And there's another callback. May I remind you of Space Corps Directive 34124? No officer with false teeth should attempt oral sex in zero gravity. Not a Space Corps Directive, but same idea. No droid can harm a human, or through inaction, allow a human or his cohorts to come to harm. One day you will all die. If we do nothing, by our inaction, we are in breach of the first law. Interesting loophole they found. Send in their new bodies. Gonna frighten the files. Anyway, their minds are transferred to the mech bodies against their will, which is kinda dark. 
Cats doesn't take as long. By the way, I love that they bothered to make the mech bodies in the Dwarfer's images down to cats' canines. I've got a stupid fat pink head! You've always had a stupid fat pink head! Their punishment is to do all of the things they had Crichton doing naturally. The one formerly known as Lister will begin by making 1,245 sugar puff sandwiches grilled with cheese. Sounds like something Lister would eat. Mop floors to the length equivalent of walking from New York to Los Angeles. Iron and press 2,000 flouncy pirate shirts. The only sucker I serve is me! Yeah? Break your little finger. Again, that's a little disturbing, actually. Defiance is, well, impossible. Meanwhile, Crichton is in a talk therapy group with other robot slave survivors. My name's Incense. Notice they all have flower child names like Wind, Tree, and Incense, but this guy's name is Excalibur. My name's Eagle. I was a service mech to a really lazy master who relied on me for everything. And he always made jokes about my head shape. Has anyone else had that? Their crew making jokes about their head shape. Yeah, the creator of this line of mechanoids was kind of a bitch for making them look that way, if you think about it. We don't have funny shaped heads. Our heads are sensibly shaped. Tell it like it is, Excalibur. Anyway, he encourages Crichton to talk about his experiences. Sometimes when I'd be vacking, Mr. Lister wouldn't pick up his feet and I'd have to vac all around them. I think we should all give Crichton a big round of applause, don't you? He's made a lot of progress. Yeah, he's not used to being told he's done a good job. Meanwhile, the other dwarfers are doing all they're supposed to, but Rimmer and Lister are starting to enjoy it. I feel so calm and tranquil. I'm rather enjoying making these sandwiches too, I must confess. <laughs> I think I'm getting the hang of this. And now Cat is too. Odd. I've suddenly started to believe in siliconia. And now we get to hear Chris Berry's Crichton impression. But Lister is still aware of what's going on. Our individual personalities are fading away. We have to escape and get our bodies back. We have to save Crichton. Goodness knows what they're doing to him. There's some old school red dwarf music. And the other dwarfers have escaped by dismantling themselves, putting the parts through the bars, and rebuilding themselves on the other side. Okay. And Rimmer betrays them, so he hasn't changed too much. I like being a mechanoid. I don't have to become an officer anymore. Compete with my brothers. That acid ball of resentment I carried around with me the whole time. It's gone. I don't want to be me. I want to be a mechanoid. That actually makes a weird kind of sense. Rimmer doesn't want to be Rimmer. Sometimes when I was young, I'd sit for hours staring at our fish tank, feeling envious. <laughs> They'd never know what it was like to fail and disappoint. Wow, that's worse than Lister with the squirrel. You've got no woman trouble, so you'll never feel as bad as I feel now. And at that moment, for a split second, I would have given anything. Anything to swap places with him? Funny how Rimmer mocked him for that. Behind closed doors, you parade up and down with a strap-on bushy tail, calling yourself Nutkin? Also, didn't Rimmer once say something about being a fish before? He walked in there and wrote, I am a fish, 400 times, with a funny little dance and fainted. Now there's an obscure callback. Let your old lives go, sirs. Join me and become a MILF. So the other two make the decision to leave Rimmer behind. Ouch. Anyway, they bump into some more mechs. Can I help you? Oh, you're new. Yeah, no, no, we're, we're not supposed to talk to you. Why do they keep you down here slaving away when you're the same as them? Now Cat's talking like Crichton. I love it. Yeah, it turns out that these mechs are a slightly less advanced model, so they're forced to work in the lower levels. Bet you've got features that they haven't. No, they're superior in every way. Uh, we don't even get to Siliconia, do we? No. Not that we believe in any of that nonsense down here. <sighs> So Lister loses his hand for, what, the fourth time? <laughs> Join us, or die. That was kind of creepy. Now Kat's personality is gone, leaving only Lister. Looking at these guys, I can see where they saved on some of the budget. Anyway, Crichton is about to become a full-fledged MILF and he gets his hat. We just hosed him down and gave him a hat. <laughs> just before Lister shows up. I'm no longer your slave bot. Who tells Crichton that he was never a slave. You're our science officer, our cook. My mum, and most of all, my friend. Crichton, you're no MILF. You're one of the boys from the dwarf. Boys from the dwarf call back, again already. The ones chasing Lister show up, and he tells Crichton about the slaves in the engine room. Someone has to do the grunt work. Take him away and prepare him. Lister's punishment is to be put in gladiatorial combat. Wait, I've made the most terrible mistake. I stopped thinking for myself. Crichton finally realizes he belongs with the crew and wasn't a slave. Who just happens to do all the smeggy jobs? He should be punished, sir. 
Meanwhile, Rimmer gets a promotion. He's fully recalibrated. Welcome to the Cleanoseum. So the fight begins, which is really more of a mop-off, where the winner will get to stay, but the loser will get flushed out the airlock. A lot of that happened in these last few seasons, it seems. What on earth are we going to do? And Lister is finally gone as well. Prepare to be cleaned. He sounds more like season two Crichton. I guess Craig Charles can't do an American, Canadian, whatever the hell accent Crichton has, so they went with that. Let the clean off begin. We don't want to clean you. Oh, I guess they're supposed to clean each other and not the floor. Okay. Now I realize I want to help you because I care. This goes on a while, but it's cute. <laughs> And Crichton is losing. They're about to execute him when... They get interrupted. Siliconia. Siliconia. Diva Droid Update Station. Everyone gets upgraded, including the droids in the lower deck, so they're all equal now. Upgrade refused. Come this way. Meanwhile, Crichton orders the other dwarfers to follow him to the recalibration room. And they're off. Afterwards, Crichton has a conversation with Wind, who is leader with the MILFs, and Rusty, who is in charge of the lower decks, and are now working together. Yeah, there's a million smudges out there, Crichton. And our squeegees are loaded. The universe is gonna be a much cleaner place. Ah, sir! Crichton has fixed Lister's guitar, while Lister has brought him a drink. Where are you going? B-deck. The airlock. Which one? The soundproof one, sir. And so ends Siliconia. This was a fun episode. It wasn't terribly deep, which honestly goes for most of seasons 11 and 12. I mean, everyone is giving Crichton orders, so they're shown what it's like to be on the receiving end of that, and presumably give Crichton a little more respect afterwards. Pretty simple and straightforward. But that's fine. It was neat seeing the whole cast in Crichton makeup and eventually even doing his voice. It's kind of gimmicky, I guess, but fun. I also get a kick out of how it's pretty much exactly the opposite of DNA, where Crichton became human. In fact, that's where Lister wishing he was a squirrel came from. Really, the concept of having your mind transferred to a weird-looking robot against your will, while your personality slowly fades away until you're nothing but a mindless slave, could be pretty horrific. But naturally, it's mostly played for laughs. I guess that's about all I have to say about this one. The humor was great, and I appreciated all the callbacks. But yeah, that's about all I can think of to say. That's your laugh! Next up is Time Wave. See you then. Does this mean I have to stop mopping the floor? Oh, bother.